Mock draft alert. Mike Tannenbaum's mock draft we are debuting today. And again, these are the picks he would make if he were making the decisions, not what he expects to happen. And he, if he were sitting in the Jets' shoes at number two, would take Zach Wilson, as they are overwhelmingly expected to do. That after Trevor Lawrence would go number one to Jacksonville. And then if he were making the decision, he would have the Niners grabbing Mac Jones from Alabama. Had the spectacular year in every way, winning the national championship. And then if he were in Atlanta, he would take Trey Lance from North Dakota State to become Matt Ryan's heir apparent. That's a bit of a surprise, perhaps. Here's a bigger one. Mike Tannenbaum says that if he were in Carolina right now with the eighth pick, he would still take Justin Fields, despite having traded for Sam Darnold yesterday. Let me show you the rest of Mike T's mock draft top 10. You see a lot of the usual suspects up there, a few names that you might be expecting to be a little bit higher, like Devontae Smith. Again, these are the picks that Mike himself would make, not what he's projecting to have happen. But as I bring the crew in here, I'm sure a lot of people will say to you, Mike Tannenbaum, and I'll tell everybody, you sent us these picks, then the trade happened. We said, okay, we'll give you a, a, a mulligan. Go ahead and change what you want to do at number eight. And you said, no, I'm still, if you're doing it, you're still taking Justin Fields. Why, Mike? Because I'm going to turn a position of weakness into strength. And if I could come out of this as the Carolina Panthers with two good, young, high-character quarterbacks with great ceilings in Sam Darnold and Justin Fields, it's a no-brainer, Greeny. First of all, Sam Darnold's 23 he has two years to go at 23.6 million. We don't know what he's going to be. If he plays well, maybe you trade him next year. There's not a lot of quarterbacks in 2022. And with Justin Fields, I like him a lot. If he falls to eight, it's too good of an opportunity for Carolina to pass on him. So why not fortify that position and get two good young players who are 23 or younger? I think it's an unusual opportunity and one that Carolina should take advantage of. Fair enough. And whether they do or don't, you are projecting, as so many are now, Justin Fields to be the fifth quarterback off the board in this draft. Every year, Mel Kuyper, it feels like there's one quarterback that just gets, just gets picked apart in every conceivable way. And this year, it is Fields. Once and for all, amidst all of this discussion, what do you think of him and where would you put him in the pecking order of these quarterbacks? He's been consistently my second highest rated quarterback, Randy. It's a gut feel for quarterbacks. That's what it ultimately gets down to. And for Justin Fields, when he played the way he did against Clemson and Trevor Lawrence through that injury, when all the pressure was on him after the struggles against Indiana and Northwestern, that showed me a lot. You go back to 2019, here was, he was nearly flawless that year. That the COVID year, obviously, and the interruptions affected everybody. So I look at Justin Fields. If he does fall, who cares? The guy that falls usually does really well at quarterback. So I think for Justin Fields, use it as motivation if you want. I don't even care about that. The, the quarterback that does fall ultimately, whether it's Justin Herbert, whether it's Josh Allen, whether it's Aaron Rodgers, whoever it may have been, has usually 90% of the time turned out to be much better than a lot of people think. What do you think, big man? Yeah, Green, I don't think Justin Fields is going to fall. I, I think if you look at Justin Fields and, and uh, Trey Lance, you say, what does Trey Lance do or, or do better than Justin Fields? I, I can't think of anything. So I, I would spin it back toward Mike T and just ask him, this is your mock draft, Mike T. Why would you choose Trey Lance over Justin Fields? Because I, I think the only thing you could say – it's upside, and for me, uh, I mean, if you look at checking all the boxes, a guy that's athletic, a guy that can make the throws on the run, he's got the experience, he's played in a ton of big games. So I, I would just ask you this, Mike T, why Lance over Justin Fields? Yeah, Booger, that's a great discussion. It's really close. I just think Trey Lance has a little bit more long-term upside. I have him going to Atlanta where he could sit for a year. You know, he had 166 yards rushing in a championship game. He threw one interception in college. It's a rare skill set. I think the way Mel put it before, you know, Mel has more experience than anybody doing this. It's a very unique sort of fact pattern, but I just think over a longer period of time, he's slightly ahead of Justin Fields. I like Justin Fields a lot. The Indiana Northwestern games, obviously the two games he didn't play as well, but he only had six interceptions in his career against a rugged Big Ten conference. So it's close, but I just think there's something really special and compelling about Trey Lance. And if we give him time to develop, I really like his ceiling. Look, we've had people jump on so many different elements of this over the course of time. But, Mel, going back to the very beginning of it, I've had people on this show say to trade everything that San Francisco traded to get Mac Jones would be a head-scratcher, for lack of a better word. What do you think? This is another mock draft that has him going three overall. I know you see it that way, too. How about Mac Jones going three overall to the 49ers? 
Well, I brought up the Tom Brady comparison. I said he's not Tom Brady. He's not going to be the greatest of all time, but he reminded me of Tom Brady when I evaluated Tom coming out of Michigan as a late sixth round pick. Now you're talking about the third pick overall. So I think some of those similarities resonate. When you see what Tom's done, you see Mac, Alabama, Michigan, pocket guy, smart, competitive, all those things, great accuracy. I think they saw a little bit of Brady there, yeah. which allowed them to say, okay, he's worthy of being the third pick overall. Super quick. Go, Bug. You know what, Mel? This almost has to feel you, you, you and I were sitting in Nashville when the Daniel Jones pick went in, and we were both just flabbergasted. This almost has that feel again. Everybody is assuming that Mac Jones is going number three. Uh, it's, something tells me that may not be the case. This starts to, it's starting to have that feel again where all of a sudden there's going to be a quarterback come out of the blue, pick that three. I think we all believe that Lawrence and, and Wilson are going one, two. Three, I, I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm just not sure it's going to be Mac Jones based on, based on what Fields has done, his workout, and we're assuming what Kyle Shanahan is going to do with his movement and, and his offense and things like that. I told nature. you already it's going to be Lance at three. Remember where you heard it first. I'll take a quick <laughs> break coming up. <laughs> Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.